and some of the tools that you will need as a natural. <laughs> well, you're gonna need this either way. And I'm just gonna say this right now. I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to bash anyone who wants to wear their hair relaxed. If you wanna relax your hair, if you wanna tech flax your hair, if you wanna perm your hair, if you wanna straight, whatever you wanna do to your hair, do it. Feel comfortable with it and rock it, okay? The good news is that whether you're relaxed or natural, most of these things that I'm telling you apply to you. You have to do the same things, it's just your hair texture is just a little bit different, that's all, okay? So no need to shame nobody for wanting to relax their hair or anything like that. Your hair is beautiful, you're beautiful, so do your thing. Back to the tips. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Sarah, and today we are talking about taking care of your hair. I am gonna show you, like I have all my products like laid out here that I use. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys the stuff that I use. I'm also gonna go into detail as to how to detangle your hair, how to wash your hair, how to create a regimen, how to moisturize your hair. We are going in, so have a seat, get a drink, whatever you need. So the first thing is, right into it, you have to listen to your hair. If your hair is dry, if you do this, okay? Right now, what you're seeing is this is a day, day six, day six or seven, um, wash and go. Now, I haven't done a wash and go in like two years. So, if you go like this, if you go into your hair and you feel it and it feels rough, it feels dry, get you a water bottle and you spray that bad boy down. Now, because I have low porosity hair, I can't just spray my hair and water. I gotta like squeeze it in. I gotta help it out a little bit. And it also helps to refresh if you have a style that you've been rocking for a minute. Cause I told you this is day seven, day six, something like that. All right? Just fluff them up. And right away you'll feel, you'll start to feel the difference. If your hair is dry, moisturize it. <laughs> just moisturize it. If you're using a product that your hair doesn't like, and you will know because I've used some products where after I'm done using it, my hair feels like, like, I don't know, like really brilly and really weird. And I just know that that product's not for me. It may be for others, but it's not for me. So it's the same thing for you. If you're using a product and you're noticing after three or four uses, even two uses, there are some products that right away you'll know, this one's not for me. But if it's one of those ones that takes a little bit more time, after a few uses, if your hair just really feels ugh after it, then stop. Stop using it. Stop. If your hair keeps breaking in the same place, it's probably due to unnecessary tension in that area, maybe from a hairstyle. So if you're used to doing cane rows and they always go up like this, or they always go back like this, or you do high ponytails, like these top knots or whatever, and you're just literally slicking up all your hair, and you're noticing maybe um, the nape of your hair is much shorter than it needs to be, or maybe your edges aren't as full as they used to be, or maybe the crown or whatever. This is an indication that maybe the styles that you're rocking are causing too much stress on a particular part of your head. The other thing too is, and I had this problem, I wasn't moisturizing my crown enough. So when I would do updos and styles like that, the rest of my hair was getting lots of moisture and all of that stuff, but the middle <laughs> in here was like dry as a bone. And I was just like looking at the rest of my hair and thinking, ooh, look at that, it looks so juicy. Poor thing in the middle was just crying. Maybe you're putting too much tension in those areas or maybe you're not moisturizing it properly. Create a regimen. I'm not saying that your regimen needs to be some 20, 30 step program. Your regimen is really gonna be two things. It's gonna consist of what you do on the days when you wash your hair, and it's gonna consist of your moisturizing routine throughout the week, okay? So let's start with the wash day. Your wash day, you're gonna have either a shampoo or maybe you're gonna do co-wash, whatever you're feeling like. Maybe you need to do a clarifying shampoo, that's cool too. So this is the shampoo that I use when I'm just doing a regular shampoo because it's moisturizing and it gets the job done, I love it. When I need like a deep, deep clean, 
This is my clarifying shampoo. I don't use it often. I probably use it once every two months or something. I like more of a clarifying detox kind of thing. When I, when I clarify my hair most of the time, that's what I'm using, the Aztec Indian Clay. I mix this with apple cider vinegar. Condition, you're gonna condition your hair. Most of the time nowadays when I'm conditioning my hair, it's a mix of these ones. I use this one. Um, and I'll also mix it with this one because it's the same brand. It's just one's tea. This one's really nice. It has the tea tree. It like tingles on your scalp. This shampoo uh, conditioner from Love Beauty and Planet. This is the one that I like to use because it has a lot of slip. I leave the conditioner in for like 10 minutes before you rinse it out, especially if I added essential oils to it because you need to give it a little bit of time to do its work. Then deep conditioner. Um, I don't have my deep conditioner here because it's finished. My deep conditioner, I put olive oil, extra virgin olive oil in there. Sometimes I might put some grapeseed oil. Those essential oils that I had mentioned before, I put a couple of drops and with essential oils, you only need like five, six, maybe 10 drops at the most. You don't need a lot. You put the bag over top of your hair. I usually put my hair in twist by this point and put everything in. And then I use this turban hair towel thing. You literally like put it on your head like this and then you wrap it and you know, Obviously, my hair is out, so. But the whole point is that will help to lock in the heat that your body is naturally giving off. At minimum, if you're gonna do a deep condition, sit with it under some kind of heat for at least 20 minutes. You can do 30 minutes, you can do 45, you can do an hour if you want to. It just kind of depends on what you like to do. And this towel is also really good to dry your hair after you've washed it without um, drying out your hair too much. When you rinse all of that out, your next step is moisturizing, right? And this leads me into the third tip. You need to learn how to moisturize your hair properly. When you can moisturize your hair properly, you'll see the results that you want to see. Your hair will feel nice, it'll look nice, all of that. And there's a spectrum from low porosity to high porosity and medium porosity being somewhere in the middle. You could one day be low porosity and years later you could be high porosity. Your ends are usually more high porosity than the rest of your hair because it's the oldest part of your hair. It's been through the most. Figuring that out, there are tests online. Um, just type in how to figure out your hair porosity or hair porosity test into Google or into YouTube and there'll be tons of videos that will show you how to do that. If you guys want me to show you how I did mine, go ahead and comment below. Here, you're gonna hear things like, LCO and LOC. So first, you would you you'd spray you spray your hair with some water just to make it um, damp. It doesn't have to be dripping wet. Your liquid, it, okay, guys. Your liquid has to have water <laughs> in it. Okay. If you are having issues, it's probably because you are expecting your oils to moisturize your hair. Oils do not moisturize your hair. Oils have moisturizing properties. If your product does not have water as the first, or at least one of the first, what, like it should either be in the number one spot or the number two spot. This is the, um, the moisturizer that I'm currently using. I've been using this one for the last two years. You go section by section. Don't have your whole hair out. Like if you have a lot of hair like mine or shoulder length hair, it's better to do it in sections versus just putting it all over. Section your hair with tools like these, like little clips. I also get these um, snagless, they're like rubber. They're really great, especially when you have a lot of hair. A lot of the um, hair bands that I use sometimes, they snap as soon as I try to do anything with them. I've had these for so long, these are great. Um, any of the products that I mentioned, I would do my best to find the links and just um, put them in the description box below so you can have them. So I do my liquid, I do my cream. For me, honestly, I'm just gonna tell you, my liquid is just water and aloe vera juice, that's what I do. 
And then my cream would be one of these two kind of products, a cream-based product, right? It's creamy. And then um, sometimes I also use this. Um, it's also a detangler, but it moisturizes at the same time, so I usually use that with my cream. This one's nice too. And then I do like a little tiny bit of this just to nourish the hair. And then I finish off with a sealant, and it's usually my coconut, ugh, my castor oil mix. I only put this part like literally on the ends. Um, and sometimes, okay, so this is my mixed bottle. It has almond, sweet almond oil, sweet almond oil, castor oil, and a bunch of other different oils in it. I usually use that, I concentrate it primarily on the ends and I work my way up. Um, yeah, so. There's that part. You're gonna hear some people that say, don't oil your scalp. Some people are gonna say, oil your scalp. I oil my scalp. So what you choose to do is up to you. You have to see, it, like it goes back to tip number one. You have to listen to your hair. So if you find that you go in here and your scalp feels, you'll know, you'll know. <laughs> your scalp just feels dry, like really brittle. This is what I do, I go in I spray it, I give it a little massage. I spray the scalp with just water, cause it needs water, it needs love too, as not just your ends. And then I put a little bit of my castor oil mix on my fingertip and I just massage into my scalp. Three, three days ago, that's what I did. I did this wash and go. I'm gonna show you the products I used for this wash and go. This is all I used straight out the shower, eco styling gel, and the curl enhancing smoothie. That's what got this. I did this six days ago. Um, three days after I, I did this, I could feel that it was, um, it was still soft, but it was getting a little bit dry. So I did exactly what I told you guys um, earlier. I didn't, I, I didn't want to pull out my hair and re-try to like, I don't know, twist it to reform the curls. I didn't have time for that. I told you, I'm a, nat I'm a lazy natural most of the time. I just, I took this off because I've been wearing my hair like this for the last week. This is how I've been wearing it. To bed, out and about, this is it. So I just took this off, I sprayed everything, I like shaked my hair, really got in there. It really got wet, like more moisturized. It wasn't dripping, but it was wet enough squeeze it in because I didn't want to disturb this because I didn't want to have to go over and go in and like shingle and do all that. I don't do all that stuff. That's a lot. When it comes to moisturizing, you have to figure out what works best for your hair. For me, I can get away with moisturizing every three days. If I moisturize my hair right the first time after my, you know, my wash routine, I don't need to do anything to it for another three days. I don't need to spritz it, I don't need to do none of that. That might be different for you. Watch it. If you wash your hair, you style it, you do everything you have to do, and you notice that two days later it feels really dry, then maybe every two days is when you need to do it. Everyone's different. If you don't wear your hair out, maybe you wear it under wigs, maybe you um, cane row it back and you wear a wig underneath it, or wear a wig on top, no problem. You can still moisturize your hair every two or three days. Take the wig off, do the same thing I told you. Spray the actual cornrows, and when you get to the ends, put them in your hands, because this is what I do when I, um, when I wear my head wraps. Put the ends in your hands and spray them with water and squeeze the water into them, and then, I take some of this and I put it in my hand and I literally rub it up and I just rub it. <laughs> they don't have to look cute. Your cane rows don't have to look cute. Nobody's seeing them. They're under the wig anyway. So just rub it in, get into each row and put the oil into your scalp, massage it, squeeze all of those products into the ends and then take your bobby pins, put the, put the, the ends, tuck them into one another and then boom, let it dry before you put your wig back on. You need combs. You need wide tooth combs. This is usually the one I use in the shower. This is usually the one I use just on a regular basis. 
um, when you're detangling your hair, start from the end and work your way up to the root. I personally, um, like a style like this, when it's time for me to detangle and everything, I go section by section and actually do some finger detangling first to get all of that, sh some of that shed hair out first. Um, then I wet it a little bit, just a little, just to moisten it up, just to help some more of the shed hairs come out. And then I go in with the comb. And because I do my pre-poos, which usually consists of oils and conditioner or something like that, or sometimes it's just oil, sometimes it's conditioner, do what you gotta do. Um, I'll put some of this on there and then just gently detangle the ends a little bit, twist it up and get it ready for wash day. Next thing you need, guys, get you some satin pillowcases. Get yourself a satin bonnet for at nighttime, okay? You need to protect your hair. And then the last and final tip, guys, leave your hair alone. Leave it, just leave it alone. Like, if you're trying to grow out your hair, remember, your hair's always growing. Unless you have some kind of medical issue that's preventing your hair from growing from its scalp, it is growing. The problem is your ends are breaking, or you're doing something and the ends aren't being retained so that you're not seeing that growth that you wanna see. You need to leave your hair alone. The less manipulation, the better. Find a style that works, that your hair likes, that's not too much tension on your edges or your crown or your nape or whatever, and rock it. Guys, at the end of the day, your hair is beautiful, it can grow. My hair grows really slow, okay? So don't try to compare your hair to someone else's hair. It's okay if your hair grows slow. It's not how fast it's growing. It's how you're maintaining it. It's how you're taking care of it. You have a goal. If you're trying to grow out your hair, you're not at the goal yet, I would tell you to just leave your hair alone. Wash it, moisturize it, style it, put it away. So let me know if you guys really like the hair videos. I need you guys to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And all the products will be in the description bar below. Love you guys, have a great one. See you next time, bye.